All right, I'm now joined with Purdue coach Matt Painter. Coach, thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. I, I read where you said that only four high major teams in college basketball didn't take a transfer. And I know you returned literally everybody to, to your team this year. How, how tempting was it to go out there and maybe try to better your roster, even though you like your team? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, when you look at, all the people you have returning, then you look at the high school guys that you've signed, you know, you feel good about it because sometimes you sign high school guys and you know, they're going to be good. You just don't know when they're going to be good. You know, it it just takes time. But um, you know, for us, for who we signed, we felt like those guys could come in here and play and, and help us right away. And then just growing, like, you know, you have people that didn't play at, at times during the year for us because of injury or COVID that then came back and, and actually and, and played really well. Then you had guys that backed up that were just behind like an all conference type guy, um, knowing that he, you know, you're a starter. We have more than five starters. And, and so a lot of people, you know, everybody has to start five. Some people have three people and some people have eight. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of guys that you could consider, you know, we have 12 guys that are on scholarship. One's going to red shirt, but I feel good about all 12 of those guys. If I had to play them significant minutes. So I think that's a, it's a great problem to have. Um, even though we haven't taken very many transfers, I don't think it's something that isn't going to affect us at some time with the landscape of college basketball for the position, the, the, the changing of that rule is going to really benefit people, but it's also going to really hurt people because you just, you can't develop guys. People are going to, you know, walk out the door um, because the grass is always greener. And sometimes it is, but a lot of times it's not. And they're they're going to be preaching the same things that you're preaching. So for us, we felt like it just made a lot of sense. Obviously we didn't use that last scholarship and then we're redshirting the guy. Um, But no, just, just feel good about our evaluation and the guys that we have in our program too. So it's not, you know, collecting talent. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're trying to recruit production and guys that fit at Purdue. Staying on that depth, has it been hard to keep everybody happy? And what, what's practice been like? I know that you, you base minutes off of how guys perform in practice. Has it just been a, a war? Yeah. For, well, it's for- great now. <laughs> it's great now. You don't have to play any games. And I told him the other day, I said, when we have inter-squad games, we start 10 people. And you're gonna, we're going to go play Providence on Saturday. We're going to start five. And you got to work into a rotation. And I'm not worried about a rotation in our scrimmage and our exhibition game. But once you get into real games, you got to start getting some things figured out. And when the competition's pretty even at times across the board, you know, now you got to make some hard decisions, but you're still waiting for them, you know, to impress you. You're still waiting for them to, to be productive and go out there and play hard. And it's always interesting to see guys once games start like who plays better than they do in practice right. and who plays a little bit less. Obviously some people will just plateau. But let's start with the front card, front, front court. And Zach Eady is really interesting to me because I know when, when you got him, I think you're going to red shirt him, right? Because you had Matt Harms and you had, you had players at the position. Yeah. And, it was going to be a possibility. That's one of the things that he talked about in the recruiting. He said he didn't want a red shirt. Right. And I just said, well, come in here and beat somebody out. And then Matt Harms <laughs> left. Sure. And it worked for him. It had been really interesting because you know, when Zach first got here, I don't think he could have got in front of him. But then, like, right as the season started and you saw that improvement, you know, he, he probably would have. Um, right. You know, he's, he's such a force down there. But his improvement um, in the fall going into the season was, was really amazing. Well, and about that improvement, because even last year, he starts the year really well and and then kind of, as all freshmen do, has ups and downs. But in the U19 stuff, I mean, he he could have been MVP. Yeah. Well, if they'd won the gold, he probably would have been. Yeah, right, right. So just has it just been shocking to see or is it just he works hard every day and he's got physical tools? and. Um. It's shocking because you just don't normally see seven, four, 300 pound guys that can move well. (laughs) You know, he moves well. He's done a much better job passing the basketball. You know, we were talking earlier about we double the post. And so it was just a nightmare for him when people doubled him when he first got here. And it was so hard. And now it's it's becoming a weapon. Like you're encouraging, you hope the double's coming. Right. And he he just he's doing a good job of taking his time, reading the defense. You know, he obviously he can just go above people and be able to make some of those passes. But it's it's been fun because 
you know, he wasn't somebody, you know, he started playing basketball as a 10th grader. And so he wasn't somebody that like is taking in seven or eight opinions before he's actually doing what he's supposed to. He's just taking in our opinion, you know, and we tell him to do something. He actually does it. It's a profound thought in coaching. Um, but you, like, you would be amazed at like what you have to battle just to get your point across sometimes, you know, with guys and we have some pretty good guys, but it's still, you have that stubbornness, you know, you have that thought of this is how the season's going to go. Um, and, and sometimes it's just not that way with him. He's just, he's just taking in what you give him. He puts in extra time. He, he can move, he can rebound, he can pass. Um, he can score the basketball. So he hasn't had a lot of uh, block shots, but he gets big and he makes it hard on people. So it makes it, you know, pretty easy for us in ball screen defense and just kind of playing satellite defense sometimes and just clogging up the lane. Yeah, Trevion Williams is a first team all big 10 pick last year. And I feel like because of Zach's improvement, he's maybe flying a little bit under the radar. How difficult will it be for you to manage both those guys minutes because they they probably are on the floor for you know 95 percent of other teams in college basketball no question and you know the thing that happens with a lot of our other big guys that we had to really manage their minutes just from a cardiovascular standpoint you know you <clears throat> they would play three or four minutes hard and then all of a sudden like you would get in a position where like they would have a a struggle offensively, then defensively, then offense. You'd have that segment in there. You're like, man, I should have got him out before, but they did well. So you kind of had to get that figured out. He's not like that. Like Zach plays long minutes. <clears throat> Zach doesn't come out of practices very much. Um, when things get tough in practice, he stays in. Um, so, but both of those, to your question, both of those guys um, are going to be able to play the five. We can play them together like in a, like a small, little snippet of like an offense, defense, offense, and, you know, get one of them out of there before there's too much collateral damage. Um, but it's just really hard in transition D with both of them. It's hard in ball screen D with both of them. And then you got to guard that face up for like, like we would really struggle to guard you. Like I would probably flip some things around and probably put a guard on you. Yeah. Then just try to find the weakest sister out there. And, um, and just stay off of him. But not, some people don't have that. Some people have, you know, a really good big and four skilled guys out there. And that puts us in a bind. So we, we're going to do a little bit of it, but not a lot of it. it. It just, and then the other thing is the quality of players that we have around those guys, you know, Caleb first, Trey Kaufman, Wren, Mason Gillis, like all those guys are good players. So it's not like, Oh, you guys aren't going big. This is your issue. Like, hold on here. Like, like these dudes here can really play. And if you also did that, you're lessening the value of those other guys too. And so like learn to use your guys, but also maximize your strengths. How, how have those freshmen been through the preseason? You, know, you talk about Trey Coffin, Ryan and Caleb first, and certainly Mason's going to miss some time early in the season. How have those freshmen kind of adapted to, to college? They've been good. You know, they, they have, it's a hair overwhelming. We have a lot of stuff that we do. Um, the one thing that kind of solidifies things for you defensively is you don't have a lot of things we do, you know, and so you're not zoning, you're not pressing, you know, you're playing man to man defense, you have your rules. And so you get pretty accustomed to what you should do. Now you have to have the discipline and the details of that, and they're getting better um, at that. But we have a lot of things that we do on the offensive end from our out of bounds plays to our side out of bounds to our sets. Um, on and on. And so that takes a little bit time to take in. What we do is we condense it, get ready to go play a game. So we kind of get a 20 pack of plays and then we go through them for three days. And so they really are going to know that. Then if anything's new outside of that 20, we're drawing it up for them. So they, they know that. But it's the one thing that kind of freezes young players is that like when they're constantly thinking about what they're doing instead of instinctually just doing it because they know it so well, now they don't quite play as hard. So just trying to get that. The other thing I talked to our whole team about the other day was, you know, we started 10 guys in an inner squad game. We'll start five at Providence. You're going to have to learn to maximize your minutes. Right. And you get 12 minutes and you're, you're mad about it. You need to play harder than that 12 minutes. You need to play as hard as you can. So that 12 can go to 16. Then I always say, as you've heard my line before, is 12 is not the lowest number. And like, you know, 12 can go down. So if you're mad about 12, well, you're probably going to go to eight or maybe zero. And right. I just, and it won't be personal. And so I like talking about it. You get a kick out of it now, but I like talking about it before somebody's name's on it. Because once somebody's name's on it, I said, guys, 
you'll take that personal. What right. did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. There's other players that are playing. I always say that when someone subs out of the game. I'm always like, why did you take me out? I'm like, I didn't take you out. I put Rob Hummel in the game. Right. They, 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 if we could play six people, I'd keep you in there. But we can't. <laughs> we can only play five. And they look at me like, oh, okay, you're being a smart aleck. You know, you're saying that. But it just – they've never been in your position. Like, at times, it's like when I took you out of the game, no matter what that other guy did, right, as you were ready, you went back in. Now, you've never been in college basketball. You've never been that other guy. Now, right. in the pros, you were that other guy. So you're like, oh, this is, that pain. Yeah, this is how it feels. <laughs> this stinks. But yeah. when you're in the NBA, you're like, okay, I can handle this. It's the NBA. It's the best. Yeah. But, like, guys can handle that piece of it. But the fight doesn't start until, you know, the, that situation happens. I like to get that out in front before there's a fight and an issue. So you're like, okay. Here's our reference point. Here's what we talked about. And then I think it makes it a little bit easier, even though guys still struggle with it. Getting to your backcourt now, is Jay Nivey the most physically gifted player you've ever coached? As a guard, he is. Yeah. As a guard. AJ Hamm is pretty gifted. He moves um, different. When you watch yeah. him, he, he, he definitely just looks different than everybody else. What, what does he need to do this year to, to be at that All-American level? You know, I think for him, just defensively, just, you know, putting time in defensively and really concentrating, um, he gets out of position and makes plays better than anybody I've been around. Yeah. But he gets out of position. So just like always talk to him about like, don't get out of position, always stay ahead of the play, always be to the basketball, always because he has such great instincts. So I think that's the first thing. And then offensively, just being aggressive when opportunities are there and then moving the basketball when they're not. You know, just learning that piece of it, especially going past college. You know, if you can learn that because you're not going to walk into a situation where you're the best player after college right. and you're just not. And those those things are, I think, going to be really important. He, he's, he's fun to be around. Um, you know, he, he can get caught up in the moment and it can really help him because he <laughs> likes to play and he's competitive. And right. then other times, like he wants to – I haven't been around a really talented guy that sometimes just doesn't want the other four guys to go off in the corner and play Euchre so they can just play like Glenn Robinson, Carson Edwards, yeah. Caleb Swan. You could go on and on. Those guys, each one was that way to a degree. Each one definitely like, had a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah each one definitely. <laughs> but that just shows you the confidence they have in themselves. And it kind of shows you their talent level. How concerning is it for you that this year there, there's going to be fans back for road games and just the fact that some of these guys have never seen it that, that are going to play and just some a lot of your guys haven't seen it in in two years now i think it's going to be great no i do too but like does it yeah. concern you that it could maybe overwhelm guys initially well, i think we have enough guys that have been in front of fans if yeah. it does you know we're, we're pretty deep and and so then the guys that kind of get overwhelmed by that they don't play quite as well like you know, that, that will hurt their time a little bit. It comes to next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just have a, you have a lot of options there. It's going to be exciting. I think it's just something, you know, you're talking about, you know, like you did in the past about getting yourself prepared for how loud it gets in some of the venues in the big 10. Defensively, where, where do you think you're at right now? I know offensively you guys have a million plays and you're yeah certainly offensively at. we're we're not even though we've got a lot of stuff in like now we really got to clean up a lot of things mm -hmm. and we really just got to execute but that happens every year it, it takes some time to really um kind of you get in positions where like certain teams are just going to knock you out of things and how do you handle it then you can get against certain teams and they're quality teams that let you run what you want to run. And so, like, you know, where are you in both situations? Can you run your stuff clean when someone's pressuring or when somebody's really being compact? Um, but defensively, you know, you're you're only as good as, like, your weakest link. And so, like, we, we're just okay at this point. Like, it's, it's taken us some time. Um, our ball screen defense has to be better. Our ability to contain the dribble has to be better. Um, but they, they tie together. It's it's no secret that offense and defense tie together in basketball. So if you can really execute well and take care of the basketball and keep setting your defense, you're and you have good size like we do. If we can do a better job of containing the dribble, and then our concentration level has to be better. You know, it's too many plays where we're just being absent minded and not doing our job versus the offense is just better than the defense. When you look at those other guards you've got, whether that's you know. 
Isaiah Thompson or, or Brandon Newman, Sasha Stefanovich. I, I think it's safe to say Eric Hunter's going to play a lot of minutes at the point guard position. How do those other guys maybe separate themselves, you know, to be that third, right. guy, that fifth guy on the floor? Yeah, well, Eric has separated himself through defense. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, we need him um, offensively to, to push the basketball like Isaiah Thompson and, and play at a faster pace but also knock down some shots, like, you know, help us in that area. He has the ability to shoot the ball better than he has. And I, I think that's going to be kind of a telltale for our guards kind of across the board is that our, our three point percentage here in the past two years have just been average mm-hmm. and we have better shooters than that. I think it starts with decision-making. I think it starts with your ability to pass anytime you can move the basketball and pass the ball. Well, and, and guys are ready to shoot the ball when you have good shooters like we do, I think our percentages should definitely go up this year, but Isaiah Thompson's played well, um, done some really good things for us. I think we got to get him shots. He can really shoot the basketball. Brandon Newman can shoot the basketball. Um, Sasha has played really well um, in practices and really has moved well and done some really good things. So those guys in there, Ethan Morton's played well. I, I know I just keep saying about each guy, but um, Ethan Morton can really pass the ball, knows what's going on, um, gotten better defensively, can rebound. And that's the other thing. Like I think we can be a great rebounding team, not just because we have bigger people, but I think Brandon Newman and Ethan and you know, we have bigger guards, Jay Nivey, you know, so we just got to kind of keep working. I think some things can really pick up for us, especially when guys start to kind of smell how things are going to unfold terms of how much they're going to play I think that can help us instead of that being a negative we want to use that as a positive to really sharpen our pencil and be more competitive and try to get more out of the minutes that we're getting that's Purdue coach Matt Painter coach thanks for joining us all right thank you before we move on let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook if you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the BetRivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, Let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins, and North Carolina's Shimon Williams, and Michigan's Stu Douglas, and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. All right, that was Purdue coach Matt Painter. Now to dive a little bit deeper, we have Brian Newbert from goldenblack.com and also Bobby Riddell. Uh, former player and now the uh, color voice of the Purdue Boilermakers. So, guys, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. You know, thanks Brian, for having me, Rob. Oh, of course, Brian. I'm going to start with you. Um, you know, everybody's back. Expectations are sky high. Um, everyone seems to be rating this team around six, seven, you know, five, right, right in that five, six, seven range. Is that fair right now for for where Purdue's at? I think it's fair, but I also think it's something they have to prove themselves worthy of, you know, to start this season. At the end of the day, you had a good year last year. You had a really good year uh, relative to ex- expectations. You had so many young guys on that team coming off such a broken offseason. Um, but you didn't do anything in the postseason. And typically these preseason rankings depend on what you did in the postseason. So this is a little bit of an outlier in that sense. Uh, Purdue obviously lost two very close games in the postseason, Ohio State, the Big Ten tournament, and North Texas in the NCAA tournament. So the last impression Purdue left people with was not necessarily what people are basing their expected first impression on this year. So I do think Purdue has to prove itself worthy. And it'll be an interesting, I guess, tell of this team's maturity that 
the added burden that comes with these kind of expectations, what that does to a team that really hasn't been through a whole hell of a lot here, because most of these guys haven't played in front of a crowd, a real crowd. Most of these guys haven't had, you know, a full off season for whatever that's worth. I think there's four guys on the team who've really been through a full normal college basketball season. And there really probably aren't any guys on, on this team who've been through the sort of challenges that come with these sort of expectations where everybody is putting you in the, you know, top three, four, five, six, seven teams in the country, you know, as former athletes like yourselves often talk about when you have that low number next to your name, people, you know, come at you a little harder. And um, I think that's something this team has to be ready for. Also, they have to make sure that they don't, as your coach would say, jump over the fight when Mackie Arena gets really loud or Assembly Hall gets really venomous because they've not been through it. Again, four guys have done that. So that that's kind of a strange question to be coming into the season with, one that applies to every team in the country. But I think the fact that more than half of Purdue's team hasn't experienced this sort of stuff adds a little bit of an, an unknown to this as well. Bobby, let's, let's, let's talk about that just as, from a player perspective. Uh, how, how important do you see that as these guys not being accustomed to maybe being in those types of environments? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly interesting. As we know, especially in Big Ten play, playing on the road with crowds in the Big Ten is certainly a lot different than playing in an empty gym. Obviously, the comforts of playing at home with fans or not is certainly there from that's the gym you practice in every day. You're comfortable with the shooting background, things of that nature. but you know, there's nothing like being on the road and the opposing team goes on a run and you start to feel the pressure and the crowd gets into it. I mean, things can really cave in on you if you don't have an experienced group that knows how to handle those type of situations. And this team does have a lot of experience now, but do they have a lot of experience in those situations? They don't really have that because of the pandemic and, and the way the season played last year with no fans. So there's really gonna, they're really going to have to rely a lot on those guys that do have that experience. You know, the Eric Hunter, Sasha Stefanovic, Travion Williams, those guys that have really been through it. That's going to be a big key for this team this year, I think, is leaning on those veterans and how those veterans handle being seniors. You know, there's a different level of being a senior that gives you, you know, empowers you a little bit more, I think, from a leadership standpoint. When you're not a senior, I think there's a little bit of that, like, okay, there's next year, just natural vibe. Whereas once it's your senior year, there's that reality of, okay, this is my last go. It's time to really give it all and really lock in. I think it empowers you from a leadership standpoint too, knowing that those guys are looking up to you as seniors, as veterans. So I think a lot will key on how those guys handle, you know, being vets and, you know, how they, how they look to the young guys to feed off them. Bobby, staying with you, I want to talk about the front court. You, you've been to the scrimmages. You, you saw Zach Eady go for 35 and 14. Um, oh, I guess good. just for those Purdue fans who didn't get to see it, was it all, was it on Travion Williams? Was it on a little bit of everybody? And do, do you think that Zach is going to be the same player as last year, but improved or is he kind of, I guess, evolved his game here in, in the off season? I mean, he's certainly going to be a lot of the same player he was last year, just more refined. I think just more confident, uh, even more skilled around the rim with both hands, just more sure of himself you know, even more on balance. We know as for, for big guys down low, when you get around other big guys and little guards scrap or scraping down on you, how important it is to keep your balance. And, you know, he's just a year older, you're bigger, you're stronger and more confident. I think that certainly the experience he had over the summer was huge for him from a confidence standpoint and confidence is just so key in any sport, uh, but basketball certainly. And uh, the more confidence you have, the, the more assertive you're going to be. And, I think he's fully aware of his skill set now and how good he can be at this level. So I think his game is only going to continue to rise. And, you know, for in that scrimmage, for instance, he's scoring on Travion, he's scoring on Caleb first, Trey Kaufman, double teams. Uh, he just has such, because he's just so big, he has an amazing ability just to get unbelievable deep post position. And all it takes is a little angle, a little pass over the top. The help side doesn't quite get there in time. And he's sh shooting a layup on a nerf hoop. And, you know, it's little lefty hooks, righty hooks, layups, dunks. And he has such a nice, you know, free throw shooting touch that he showed last year. He was three for four at the line the other day. That's going to be a key, certainly, to, for him to shoot free throws again well. But he's just a mountain of a man. And uh, he's really 
settled into a place where I think he believes how good he is, and, and that's a dangerous position for the opponent. Ryan, Bobby talked about how, how loaded the front court is with, with the freshman, and, and also Mason Gillis is going to be suspended to start the year. How do you see the, the freshman kind of playing out with, with Mason's suspension? And certainly it's going to be a little bit different, but you've seen these guys play as much as anybody. How, how do they fit in on this Purdue team? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's probably Purdue's biggest challenge right now. And that, that that's a really good problem to have is to have too many players, but that's kind of the reality of it. You know, Painter has said that this might not necessarily be a deal where the best five guys start. It might be two units of guys who complement each other the best. Uh, you know, I think Mason Gillis is going to be a really good player. Uh, I, I think he is a really good player already. He shot the ball really well all summer long from everything I saw. He, he gives Purdue a lot of that kind of intangible stuff that is so important on teams, but this was not a good time for him to be, you know, sidelined uh, for the start of the year because Caleb first and Trey Kaufman ran are two of the, two of the best recruits, you know, Matt Painter sign. You know, Purdue's had some pretty good forwards over the year, Vince Edwards and, of course, Grady Eifert. Um, <laughs> but I think good. both of those guys <laughs> – what's that? Those guys were good. <laughs> <laughs> no one other than those two. Um, I think that, you know, obviously Caleb first and Trey Kaufman run both have a lot of ability. Um, Trey Kaufman Wren is one of the better offensive front court players. I think Painter signed. He's going to be a – productive score for Purdue Caleb first is just one of those guys that productivity finds him because he, he tries so hard and he's got so, so many physical gifts and so much skill. Uh, and then you throw in the fact that Purdue has an, a returning all American at center who may not even be the best center on his team right now. And you have a really, really good problem to have here. Somebody's, probably going to have to play a lot fewer minutes than they're, they're worthy of. I think that's a reality for this whole team. Matt Painter said that at media day, that there's going to have to be some sacrifice involved on this team uh, because it might not just be one guy falling out of the rotation. It might be six guys playing 15 minutes a game when at a lot of other places they'd be playing 25, that kind of thing. But Purdue should be, you know, as talented as it's ever been in the front court, as deep as it's ever been in the front court, and as offensively imposing, I think, in the front court as they've been maybe ever. And they've had some really good ones when they had Caleb Swanee and A.J. Hammonds and uh, Isaac Haas all on the same team and Vince Edwards. That was a damn good uh, offensive front court. But this should be a really, really good offensive front court. This should be a really, really good rebounding front court. They're going to have to learn to guard some people who might have slight matchup advantages over them. But, you know, Purdue has just a wealth of riches uh, in that front court. It's going to be a matter of putting those guys in the best positions they they can be in to succeed, uh, figuring out where Mason Gillis is going to fit in once once he comes back, uh, and then getting those freshmen onboarded as quickly as possible because that they, they both have the ability to be really, really high-impact players right away. It's hard to believe I'm going to say this, but is it realistic that – Travion Williams could be playing this year at times looking over his shoulder, <laughs> like yes. where, where it's just yes. like he has a short leash and it's hard to believe yes. saying that about a guy that could be an all American himself or, or even a first team all league type guy. But how, how realistic is that for, for him? It's, it is very realistic. That's been the nature of Purdue center position over the years. Yeah. They've had <laughs> this ridiculous line of guys and you get to a point where you have like a first team, all big 10 sort of guy A.J. Hammonds had, you know, got benched in favor, not benched, but taken out of the starting five in favor of Isaac Haas a few times. Um, you know, Travion Williams jumped over Matt Harms uh, at times, if I recall correctly. It is entirely plus, you know, I think did, didn't last year Zach Eady start some games over Travion Williams? I think he did. I, I think he did. That whole season's a blur for yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is very realistic. You know, I, I think. I filled out my uh, preseason All Big Ten team today, and I almost put I almost put Zach Eady on it right alongside Travion Williams, which would have sure. been which would have totally made me look like Purdue Homer guys. So I, I didn't do but, it. But you wouldn't be. I but mean, that's, that's totally I don't think fair. it's unreasonable. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I, I don't think it's unreasonable to suggest that Purdue's backup center is, is a top fifteen to twenty center in college basketball. Now in the Big Ten, where you got Kofi Coburn and Hunter Dickinson. And Travion Williams, you know, he's a top five guy in the Big Ten, but he might be a top 15 to 20 guy nationally. And for a guy like that to not be on a preseason all-league team is just really, really 
strange. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think people realize what Zach is going to be this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think he's going to absolutely erupt if Purdue gets him back for his junior year. I think he's a big 10 player of the year type of guy next year. This year I could see him playing at a first team, all big 10 level and not even being a full-time starter. That's what Purdue has on its hands here again at center. Bobby, it's not just the bigs, though. Certainly, Jay Nivey is an elite talent. What do you like about his game, and, and what kind of season do you think that Jaden's going to have? Yeah, I love love everything about Jaden's game. You know, just a really fun guy to watch, honestly. And, you know, Purdue has had a number of really, really good teams over certainly Coach Painter's tenure and even before with Coach Katie. But they haven't had too many guys at the guard position like Jaden as far as pretty big, 6'4", long arms, and just an super explosive athlete and a guy who is very skilled as well. Great ball handler. Something that I really like about his game is I feel like he's got really underrated vision. Uh, a lot of times I feel like he does a great job when he gets into the paint, making the right play, whether it's attacking and scoring for himself or, or kicking out for open three point shooters or, or dumping it off to a guy like Travion for a slam. And then his first step is, is certainly one of the best in the league. And that's the kind of guy you got to have when you face super high level competition, like Purdue's hopefully going to face deep into March this year. You know, you saw those guards from Baylor, how good they were defensively last year. You need a guy like Jaden Ivey late in shot clock to be able to get, if not a good shot for himself or others, at least a shot that is a quality look that is makeable. And that's where his game needs to go to the next level is his perimeter jump shot. We saw last year he struggled with that. Uh, his three-point percentage certainly for the course of the year was not what he wanted, although for the last 10 games of the year, he made some pretty strong improvement there. If I recall, it was like around 35 36% from three of the last 10 games, which was a really great sign for Purdue. He made a number of big shots late in uh, February and in March last year for them. So if he's able to, you know, you know, me, Rob, you and I have talked about this regarding Jaden, like if he's able to have good shot selection this year, play within the offense, trust his teammates, and then take good open threes, you know, we know he's going to be able to get to the rim at will. And, and that's where Purdue's going to hope to have a number of guys surrounding him along with the bigs that can make jump shots. Purdue struggled. A lot of those peripheral, you know, role player type guys struggled with their shot last year from three, and that really hurt Purdue offensively at times. So if they can get some of those role players really stepping in, shooting open threes at a high percentage, all of a sudden Purdue's offense is going to be really, really difficult to defend. Brian, Brian, let's talk about those those role players right here. I, I feel like you could say with Sasha Stefanovic, Brandon Newman, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lump Isaiah Thompson in here as well. Th those could be your three guys that you would play at the other guard spot. Do you feel like anybody in that group has separated themselves? Certainly, Sasha has the experience, but it seems like at times, you know, it's kind of gone back and forth between one of those guys as the fifth guy on the floor for Purdue. Yeah, I think what Isaiah or what. Isaiah Thompson, Sasha Stefanovic, and Eric Hunter have to be big picture is a shot makers, obviously, um, ball movers, decision makers. They have to play like experienced guys. But beyond that, I think they sort of have to be produce equilibrium. I think they have to be their level head. Uh, I think the fact that they've been through a lot of the experiences we talked about before um, is something that sets them apart on this roster. Uh, but also I think it's their personality types to kind of be laid back and kind of even keeled. And I think this team could use some of that to balance everything else out. I think Jade Nivey is a very excitable guy. I think Brandon Newman's a very excitable guy. Um, and I think there's going to come points in time this season where the games get really heavy and the environments get really crazy, where this team just needs to kind of take, take a deep breath and lean on having been there before. And when, most of your guys haven't been there before that comes down to those older guys, you know, kind of late in the season, I thought that Jay Ivey really came on. And I think a big part of that was the fact that he missed all those games early in the season, all the mistakes freshmen are supposed to make in November and December, he had to make in January and into February. And then when you got to the end of February and into March, he became this sort of star in the making. And I think that kind of reshuffled things a little bit. When Stefanovic came back from COVID, it was almost kind of a reset. Brandon Newman had to adjust coming off the bench. Now I think that's kind of Purdue's new world order sort of coming into this season. And those guys have to kind of fit into that mix. I think Eric Hunter, you know, ha has to coexist as best as he can with Jaden Ivey and make him better. I think Sasha Stefanovic has to be one of those guys 
that makes everybody else better by getting the ball where it needs to be at the right time, but also making those shots that sort of provides the space that Zach Eady and Travion Williams need, all of that stuff. I think those are kind of your glue guys. Beyond that, I think Mason Gillis being a Grady Eifert sort of low volume, um, low turnover possession generator in terms of his offensive rebounding and taking care of the basketball, making the occasional open shot. He falls into that category. I think Ethan Morton can be kind of the consummate glue guy because he just, he kind of exists as a basketball player to make everybody else better, to move the ball. Doesn't think of himself above anyone else by any means. He lives for the other four guys on, on the floor with him. I think there's definitely a role for that potentially on this team. It's a matter of how many minutes you can get the guy. Isaiah Thompson, I think, uh, I think his role comes down to decision making, at being a veteran, but also making those open shots. Purdue's got to shoot better, and all the guys I've mentioned here are capable shooters. And if you can just be that PJ Thompson who just has the fourth or fifth option in the offense, makes that open shot, you know, as often as not, that's that that's a pretty valuable role on this team. Last question here. I'm going to ask both you guys. Brian, we'll start with you. When you look at this team, what concerns you most about Purdue's roster going into this year? Yeah, uh, they have to shoot better. Uh, I think they have capable shooters. Uh, I don't know if there's a Bobby Riddell on this team or a Robbie Hummel on this team, but they have capable shooters who just, I didn't think, shot very well last season. A lot went into that. You know, Jaden Ivey played through a lot of mistakes, as Bob mentioned I think he closed out shooting 35, 36, 37 percent of the last 10 games of the year. His decision making came a long way. I think his volume will will decrease this year because I think his, his decision making in general will be better. Sasha Stefanovic probably isn't going to get COVID-19 again. If he does, we'll have a national story on our hands um, <laughs> that that affected him, uh, his percentage overall, because I think he missed like eight or nine straight after he came back from COVID. So Purdue's overall percentage was weighted down by some circumstance. Eric Hunter didn't shoot as well as he's capable of. I think Brandon Newman will be better this season. Hunter will be better. Isaiah Thompson's got a chance to be a 40 plus percent guy on low volume. I think Mason Gillis has a chance to be a 40 plus percent guy on lower volume, if you ask me. And I, I just think this will be a much better three point shooting team this year than they were last year, but they have to prove it uh, first. And then the second thing for me is they've got to do a better job against the dribble. I think if Jaden Ivey and Brandon Newman, two really high-end athletes, much more so than Purdue's typically had on the perimeter over the years, if those two guys take a real jump forward and join Eric Hunter as kind of high-level uh, capable defenders, I think Purdue won't have to sell out as much schematically uh, in order to contain the dribble, and that will keep them out of some of the difficult positions that you know they've found themselves in over the years where they've been a little bit vulnerable to outlier shooting when teams reverse the ball against their help, things like that. So those two things are what come to mind for me. Those are pretty fundamental elements of basketball, but two really important ones for Purdue um, in terms of their ability to shoot the basketball and, and contain the dribble. And, of course, take care of the basketball, always a constant for Purdue. Bobby? Yeah, I certainly agree with a lot of what Brian said there as far as concerns. I think my biggest concern would be, and this is typically more – this concern is more really regarding when they would play – really high level opponents, which hopefully Purdue will be playing this year in the NCAA, late in the NCAA tournament, in the Big Ten tournament, is having a second guard on the team who can really step up and make a play occasionally off the dribble. You know, when mm -hmm. you, you know, guards usually end up making a lot of big plays when it comes to March. We saw Baylor's team, for instance, last year. Gonzaga had a lot of really good guard play as well. Obviously, we saw with Purdue when they made their Elite Eight run, Carson Edwards and Ryan Klein coming up big time at the guard position. I think we know for the most part what we have with Jaden Ivey, and I think he's definitely going to be one of those guys who can obviously make plays off the dribble. But when you get into, you know, March and you're playing against great teams, it's hard to beat a guy with just one, you know, hard to beat a great team with just one guy on the perimeter making plays. I think the second guy on the Purdue's team that hopefully can fill that role would be Eric Hunter. You know, he certainly seems the most capable. He's got a great mid-range game. Um, you know, he struggled certainly with the three-point shot last year some. As a sophomore, he shot it much better. If he's able to improve a little bit with the outside shooting, that'll help. And then, you know, he's a crafty guy. He's got a good mid-range game. If he's able to step up this year and make some plays off the bounce, if teams are really t trying to take away Jade and get the ball out of his hands, if teams aren't going to let you get the ball in the post, do you have a second guy on the perimeter besides Jaden who can make a play off the bounce, you know, in crunch time? And I think Eric has a chance to be that guy. And I think it's a big season for him um, as a senior. 
Well, regardless, it, it should be a, a phenomenal year in West Lafayette. Guys, great stuff. Re- really appreciate you coming on. Brian Newbert, Bobby Riddell, um, thanks for having ha- coming on here with us. And uh, keep tuning into the Field of 68 for the remainder of the uh, Top 50 Countdown.